Bologna and Mabillard are considered to be one of the biggest and best roller coaster manufacturers amongst the theme park and amusement park industry anywhere in the world. They've been in production since 1988 and are world renowned for their fantastic roller coaster collection that often features some of the best uh, maintenance records of any different uh, coaster manufacturer anywhere in the world. However, there are pros and cons to going with the B&M coaster. Like I say, they have fantastic maintenance records, they're people eaters, most of their coasters have fantastic train capacity and are off able to offer uh, multiple trains on the track at any one time. However, B&M have typically been known as a coaster manufacturer that sticks within their comfort zone. When you look at enthusiast favourite coasters, people recognise B&M as, yeah, they're good, you know, they make a, a good set, set of coasters. But when you're talking about the top elite coasters anywhere in the world, people's top 10 rankings, it's not many people that will rank a lot of B&Ms within those top 10 rankings. Now, B&M make a fantastic collection of coasters, however, they've always been typically focused at the thrill department. Now, because of other uh, revelations within the coaster community over the past few years, um, we have seen B&M, Bollinger and Mabillard start to change their ways a bit. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at uh, the future of B&M and potentially why they've started to change their coaster collection, why they've started to expand their portfolio of different coaster models and see where they may be going with different coasters in the future. Uh, welcome to Coast and All, and if you enjoyed today's video, please do give it a like, it massively helps out the channel, and subscribe for more videos like this on the future. Um, so, B&M, Bolliger and Mabillard, uh, what, let's have a look at their history before we go into the future, and you know, uh, potentially look at why they might be changing uh, their different new additions in terms of coasters, and what, what exactly I mean by that. So, like I say, they've been in production since 1988, and their first coaster was a coaster called Iron Dragon. Um, this was a stand-up coaster with a very short layout, only featuring a few inversions. And a lot of the older B&M coasters now, we're starting to see come to the end of their life cycles. Look here, in the uh, just in the UK, at uh, my home park, Holton Towers, Nemesis. This was a 1994 uh, B&M inverted coaster. And this, as of the 2024 season, is getting a complete retrack, ready to reopen next year for its 30th anniversary. Uh, we saw over at Islands of Adventure uh, in Orlando, uh, we saw the Hulk uh, over the past few years get a complete retrack as well. So it appears that, you know, even though B&Ms are renowned for having fantastic maintenance records, uh, being very reliable, not having much downtime in comparison to other in uh, manufacturers such as Intamin um, over the past, uh, you know, Zamperla, Vacoma. Uh, you know, B&M is renowned for having a far better maintenance record and being far more reliable than these different manufacturers. It seems that, you know, at these busier parks such as Islands of Adventure and Nemesis, uh, some of these older B&Ms now are starting to come to the end of their life cycle. Uh, we have seen some older B&Ms removed completely already. You know, they've been smart in China. We also saw Jordan Dragons at Islands of Adventure be removed over the past few years. Some of them have started to be relocated or have required, you know, uh, partial retracks or uh, new trains and, and periods of downtime and maintenance so it appears we are starting to come to the end of those original B&M coasters you know uh, they are starting to uh, take a toll you know even the best most reliable machines do have a life cycle it appears we are getting to the end of a lot of these original B&M coasters but let's have a look at their old portfolio you know they, they created a lot of stand-up coasters originally although we haven't seen one of these since the 1990s and um, we then saw the introduction of uh, the inverted coaster uh, obviously with the Batman uh, clones over in uh, the Six Flags chains in America, they were the first inverts, then they started to spread throughout Europe uh, and, and Asia. Uh, we've seen over, I think, realistically, their most recent uh, development before uh, sort of the modern day B&M, I'm going to call it, uh, the Wing Coaster. That was a concept that started in the 2010s. And, you know, since the first Wing Coaster, we've, we've, you know, they, they have started to pop, pop, pop up all over the world now. Not as successful in America as they have been in, in Europe and Asia. There's a lot more wing coasters in Europe and Asia than there are actually over in America. Um, but, you know, these are fantastic looking coasters. And I think, you know, especially to the GP, these look fantastic. So people are starting to see uh, more wing coasters now. Uh, back in the 90s, we also had the dive coaster. That's another uh, very unique concept. You know, obviously with the holding brake at the top of the lift hill, coasters like Oblivion, uh, they look fantastic for the GP. And I think that is one thing about B&M, you know. They might not be the most thrilling of rides to us enthusiasts, but the GP love them. They look fantastic. You know, the hyper coaster, um, you know, the 200 feet tall coasters, they look fantastic with those uh, really picturesque airtime hills. Uh, you know, the sensation of being held at the holding, holding brake on a, on a dive coaster, crazy scary for the GP. Uh, wing coasters look crazy to the GP, you know, being out on the wing seat rather than over the track. You know, B&Ms are fantastic uh, coasters for the GP, and I think they are great investments for the parks because of that. The GP love them. 
great return on investment for the parks and you know on top of that like i say great reliability and fantastic people eaters with great capacity um but in recent years you know We've started to see the rise of RMC. People love RMC coasters now. You know, they're hybrid coasters, they're Raptor coasters, fantastic airtime, crazy unique uh, elements and layouts. Uh, Intamin has definitely had a bit of a resurgence in the past. They were known for having these fantastic coasters, but, you know, not necessarily the most reliable. Uh, you know, old Intamin is associated with having a lot of uh, reliability issues and uh, being down a lot of the time. So I, I can assure that after Parks spent so much money on these coasters, they wouldn't be happy with that investment. I mean, no, look recently now, Top Thrill Dragster, they've chosen to go with uh, Zamperla to turn it into Top Thrill 2 rather than going with Intamin because the relationship between Cedar Fat and Intamin is still so bad from the past. But, you know, Intamin have taken a resurgence recently, become super reliable. Um, man manufacturers like Zamperla, you know, these smaller manufacturers are starting to create modern day thrill coasters and, you know, that adds uh, another bit of competition in the market for B&M. Um, look at Vekoma, they've had a complete turnaround, they were known for having some of the worst, roughest coasters anywhere in the world in the past with their boomerangs and their SLCs, but you know, modern Vekoma is completely different, so you know, there's clearly a lot more uh, manufacturers that are competing with B&M in the market these days, and therefore that will force B&M to change their ways a bit. So in the past few years especially, um, let's look at some of uh, the new B&M coasters, we've seen uh, Pipeline the Surf Coaster, Open in 2023 at SeaWorld Orlando. That's a, a modern take on the uh, original stand-up coaster. Although this is featuring sort of uh, the biggest problem with the stand-up coaster was the, the the restraints and people complaining about how painful the restraints are. And as you can see here on screen, the seats like bounce up and down a bit, so that makes them a lot more freeing. Very open air trains, and rather than being airtime uh, in inversion focused, I should say, like the original ones, they're more airtime focused now. Airtime is clearly a lot more popular nowadays with you know manufacturers like RMC and Intamin focusing on airtime, so it's good to see B and M starting to try and focus more on that ejector airtime rather than the flow airtime that we see on their hypers. Um, I think obviously over the past few years um, uh, we've started to see uh, more launch coasters be built by B&M as well. This was uh, you know, a good example of that as well, Pipeline. We saw Thunderbird, the B&M wing coaster at Holiday World uh, 2015 I think that was. Um, Chessington built um, Mandrill Mayhem this year as well and with the launch coasters. So it's good to see B&M start to expand their portfolio and use a lot more launch coasters uh, in their in their models now because you know in, in the past we've only really seen chain lifts on B&M coasters so it's good to see them expand their portfolio by adding more launch coasters into their portfolio and uh, I think as well uh, more family coasters you know we've seen Maximus at Legoland Germany, uh, Mandrill Mayhem, uh, Chessington World Adventures, the family inverts that we've seen in China although they don't seem to have really kicked on because I, I can't imagine they're as good value for money as say the uh, Vekoma family inverts uh, uh, you know, I think there are better options in the, in the invert market there. But we started to see a lot more of these family thrill coasters like Maximus, like Chessington's Mandrill Mayhem. And I think definitely uh, that that is a bit of a niche in the market. You know, there are a fantastic collection of family thrill coasters out there from manufacturers such as Zamperla and Vekoma these days. Uh, you know, look at the Vekoma Boomerang coasters. They're popping up everywhere now, even into America. Now that we see new Vekoma popping up in America. And I think B&M trying to fill some of this family thrill market. You know, it's not necessarily a new model. They're using their same models like the wing coasters, but making them into a more family focused, uh, you know, while still providing thrills with those inversions. I think that's a really clever idea from B&M. And I think in the future, we are going to continue to see uh, more of this. I think, like, I'm not too sure if it'll be new models or just like smaller versions of some of their other models. But in my opinion, I can see maybe a mini dive, you know, a really small dive. Um, I, I think uh, maybe they'll continue to go down uh, maybe a mini sort of multi-launch coaster sort of thing. Uh, you know, no inversions, focusing on the airtime. I'm not sure if that will necessarily be with a wing seat or, you know... Uh, two across seating uh, maybe similar trains to some of the, the hypers and gigas but you know we've seen that leaked family coaster supposedly coming to sea world orlando it does appear that bnm are going to be going down more of the family coaster route and i think that's a really smart idea it's definitely a bit of a niche market and um you know they will always get um the, the benefit of bnm is they will always get you know some parks maybe maybe parks in asia or you know super parks like the six flags parks uh, like cedar fair parks maybe energy landia buying their massive giga coasters hyper coasters and you know they may not be that common but when they do get bought that's a 20 30 million dollar investment into the company so i think bnm maybe needs to start focusing on rather than having hardly any investments and, and new coaster installations maybe start to you know start to build loads of different family coasters but then every now and then when they do get a thrill coaster built that's a massive investment into the business and will uh, you know sort of keep them going uh, with these sort of less common big investments and these smaller family coaster investments in between uh, but yeah that's my opinion as, as to why B&M's had to change their ways over the past few years because of uh, more uh, sort of competition within the coaster manufacturer market 
uh, you know, sort of changing their ways, maybe away from inversion slightly and more towards airtime. And I think they, they want to sort of fill that niche in, within the family thrill market and, uh, you know, focus on adding more family coasters between their big uh, sort of giga coaster investments, which will keep them going. Um, but what do you think? You know, is there another reason I'm missing here as to potentially why B&M have changed their ways over the past few years? And also, more importantly, what do you predict for the future of B&M? I think, you know, they, they have been a manufacturer which has been stuck in their ways for a long time. And I think it's really interesting to see where B&M goes in future. I think a lot of people worried about them after the pandemic. Their coasters are very expensive. I think people uh, potentially thought that there would be less uh, parks willing to spend that much money on a B&M after the pandemic and maybe go for cheaper manufacturers. But that doesn't appear to really be the case. But maybe that is a reason why B&M have started to offer more. Uh, family coasters because that obviously going to be cheaper than the large thrill coasters so i'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback on the future of bnm down below once again thank you very much for watching today's video if you did enjoy please do give it a like it massively helps out subscribe to coastnaut for more videos and thank you very much for watching